problem 12. Evaluate the integral of 2 over x to the 3 halves dx from 1 to 4. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do in this one is move the x up top, so that's actually going to be the integral of 2x to the negative 3 halves. And then from here, we can go ahead and apply our power rule. I'll increase the power by 1. I'll add 1 to the power. That would be x to the negative 1 half. And then the reciprocal goes out front, which would be negative 2. So this becomes negative 4 over the square root of x. I now do need to evaluate it at 4 and 1. So I will plug 4 in first, and then minus plug in 1. So I end up getting negative 4 over 2, um, which is negative 2. And then this will be um, plus 4. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Problem number 13, evaluate the integral of the absolute value of x plus 2 from negative 4 to 2. Since it is an absolute value, we do want to split it into two separate integrals. To figure out where to split it, we're going to set the inside equal to 0. And if I solve for x, I'll get x equals negative 2. So I'm going to split going from negative 4 to negative 2 of x plus 2. And then we'll add the interval from negative 2 to positive 2 of x plus 2 dx. Now the reason that we did this again is because a normal line would cause things to be negative, but the absolute value is going to bump things to be positive. So this first part right over here, we're going to get a negative answer for it, so I need to take the opposite of it to make sure I get a positive answer. So if you forgot this step, that's okay. Down at the end, we just need to make sure we adjust. So now I'm just ready to take the integral. The integral of x plus 2 will be 1 half x squared plus 2x. I will evaluate it at 2 and negative 4, and I'm just going to ignore this negative till I'm done with my problem. If I plug in 2, I will get, let's see, that's going to be 4 over 2, 2 plus 4, which gives me 6. And then minus, if I plug in negative 4, I'm going to get 16 over 2, which is 8, minus 8, which will be 0. So I end up getting, did I do that right? I don't think. Right. Oh, this was negative 2. Okay, let's try this one again. Okay, so if I plug in negative 2, I do get minus 0. I do know that. If I plug in negative 2, I know that I get negative 2. And then negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. But remember, we have this negative sitting up there, which is going to force this to be a positive 2. Again, since we're dealing with the absolute value, I should not get a negative for either one of these answers. Okay, now let's go over here and evaluate the other one. Again, I'll get 1 half x squared plus 2x and evaluating it at 2 and negative 2. If I plug in 2, I will get 2 plus 4, which would be 6. And then minus, if I plug in negative 2, I will get negative 2 as an answer. So 6 minus negative 2 will be 8. So now I'm going to take both of those answers and put them together. 2 plus 8 would give me 10. This is an alternate way to work problem number 13. What I'm going to do on this one is actually draw a picture, and it looks like most of you are more comfortable drawing the picture anyway on these problems. I first of all need to figure out where the V is going to happen, so I'm going to take what's inside and set it equal to 0, and when I do that, I get x equals negative 2. So I know this absolute value is going to V at negative 2. So it's going to look something like that. Okay, And now, basically, I'm going to go from negative 4 Oh, negative 4 to positive 2. So I'm going to be finding the area under those triangles. First thing that I'm going to do is try to find the heights at my endpoints. So to find the height at my endpoint, this is over at negative 4. So if I put negative 4 into this absolute value formula, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. So that height is 2. And then over here, when x equals 2, if I were to plug 2 in, 2 plus 2 is 4, the height is 4. So that's going to help me actually get my two triangles. I'm going to call this one A and this one B. So triangle A is 1 half. The base of that triangle is 2, and the height of that triangle is 2. So the area of A is 2. And then to get B, um, it's going to be 1 half. The base of that triangle is actually 1, 2, 3, 4 units. And then the height is 4 and then that will end up being 8. So then, since they're both above the x-axis, we'll add the 2 together, and we end up getting 10. Right, the next problem, express the desired quantity as a definite integral, and then evaluate. Find the amount of water lost from a bucket leaking 0.4 liters per hour between 8.30 and 11 a.m. Okay, number one thing is I'm at liters per hour. I just want liters. I don't want the per hour to be there anymore, so that's why we're going to take the integral. 
Okay, um, from where to where, I could do a couple things. I could either do from 8.5 to 11, or I can do from 0 to 2.5. So either one of those will give you the right answer. I'm actually going to work it this way, but it does not matter. Okay, now liters per hour right now is just a unit. So if I want to know what to take the integral of, I'm just going to take the integral of what comes before my unit label. So it's just going to be 0.4. Even though it says per hour, I know lots of people want to put x, but I'm just going to put 0.4. I will put dx so that people know that my variable is x. All right, from here we're going to go ahead and evaluate it. The integral of 0.4 is 0.4x, and now I can go ahead and evaluate it at 11 and 8.5. When I do that, I'm going to get 4.4 minus 3.4, and when I um, subtract those, I will get 1, and my units will be if I was at liters per hour and I got rid of my per hour, it is one liter, and that was the amount of water that I lost from the bucket between 8.30 and 11. And if you worked it from 0 to 2.5, you should still get one as an answer.